Mm-hmm. It's your boy Prescription Man. And your girl Mary Jane, the queen of the show. And this is the, the Private, Private Hip Hop Podcast. Podcast. Hey, my voice <laughs> a little raspy, you know what I mean? We've been we've been on the road getting it in all weekend, man. Performing. Uh, all kinds of things, man. It's been a dope weekend, man. Shout out Justin K. Shout out Dope House Records. Shout out everybody, the whole team, man, that made the yes. trip. Uh, uh, d- dope vibes. We'll probably talk about that more in, uh, here in a minute, but... Um, we do a little uh, sponsor shout outs, you know what I'm saying? Get this thing rolling with some little sponsor shout outs. You know, pay the bills, you know what they say. <laughs> uh, man, Mixed Media 23, uh, you know, an event that we are throwing in Austin March 18th, uh, during South by Southwest week, man. Uh, it's on 6th Street at Rich's Art. It's gonna be an all day event, like a 10 hour long event, man. We got media outlets from all over the state of Texas, and we got tons of performers coming through the rock. We got an indoor stage, an outdoor stage. We're gonna have uh, uh, Leo gonna be in there doing photo shoots, all kinds of things. So so, uh, Mixed Media 23 is the uh, the most official, unofficial place to be. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to get involved, tap in. You can email privatehiphoptour at gmail.com. We're looking for sponsors. We're looking for uh, performers who are trying to get content, who need these interviews, who need uh, who need dope places to perform and be filmed and get dope uh, professional photography and get linked in with good media outlets. Like, tap in with us. We're really trying to share our resources, you know what I mean, the best we can. And, you know, pay it forward. So, tap in. Let's go. Yes, it's going down. Who you got um second sponsor will be chronic cosmo mm-hmm. is the dopest spot in the city yeah. but all your hair needs skin care needs all that good stuff we do body waxing as well so if you hairy let's get that cleaned up <laughs> <laughs> and as uh, as of right now i have started to offer my lot classes so if you're trying to learn how to make some money easy and fast come holla at your girl yeah yeah entrepreneurship at its Chronicosmo.com. finest yeah tap in we got a good, good show today, man. Uh, a super uh-huh. special guest who usually is is, is behind on, on on this show per se. Lately, has been behind the the ones and twos. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Not not in front of the camera, but he's somebody who definitely is, is not new to being in front of the camera. You might have seen him on uh, some some things tied uh, with private hip hop. You might have seen him before private hip hop. You might have seen him on on a, a sports show. You might have seen him on some uh, on some comedy skits. You know what I mean? You, you might have seen him on a stage performer. Ain't no telling. Yeah. Uh, you might have seen him on my snap. You might have. <laughs> hey. All the way uh, from Colleen, Texas. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Notes Smith, man. How you doing, bro? Doing good, man. Yeah, doing good, yeah, man. Yeah, doing good. yeah. You get the intro today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Little drum roll. I like yeah, that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're on the other side of this. Of this it, camera it's this pretty time. different. It's yeah. pretty different. Yeah. <laughs> and this the is mic. actually my. You're on the other my, side of the mic and on the other side of the camera. This is actually like my first official interview. Okay. Hey, so, you pop that cherry. Hello. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> she always <laughs> popping cherries, man. And I always get a reaction from yeah, everybody. Nasty. Every Straight time I nasty. pop that cherry, they get a reaction. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, it, 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 it's something a little different today. Uh, we usually have on artists. We usually have on. I mean, you are artists as well. But uh, in, in in this realm, uh, the where where you're affiliated with us, and most people might know you, is more of a, a, a media personality. You're somebody who has your own podcast, your own shows. Yes. You know what I mean? Your own platforms. And uh, and and so you know, this this is something a, a, a little different. A little for different. Us, you know a little different. Saying? A little different. So but it's I, nice. I like. I that. feel like it's gonna be a breeze because it's yeah. just like we got a, we got. It's, it's like, like it's like it's three like hosts. Talking. You got right. three hosts today, yeah. y'all. You know, what it's gonna be a great show. Go anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. Anywhere on this one. They can go anywhere. Nah, for sure. Uh, you, you, you made a trip from Colleen uh, for, for this. Well, I say that, but really you came from Houston last night. Mm-hmm. She was with us. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, originally you're not from Colleen, right? You're, you're, you're from another. Uh, I'm somewhere? a military brat, man. Yeah, talk to um, me. My stepfather and my father was both military. Okay. Um, Papa was Rolling Stone. Yeah. I mean, the military made him go anywhere. Yeah. So, like, Germany, Italy, um, Virginia. Uh, the, down to Florida. Those are all places that, that I've you lived at. Lived um, wow. For like all the way up until 10th grade, I didn't stay at a, a single school for more than two years. Mm. I was always hopping. So like... Did you enjoy that? No. No. Um, because you count down the days of person when you meet them. Because you know you're never going to like... You know what I'm saying? I meet you and then, hey, we're cool. My dad's been a PCS later. So it's like... And back then you didn't have the cell phones. You didn't have the Facebooks. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. like... I hit you on email. Yeah. What's your AI? Right. You know right. What's like, your AI? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, it was just pretty whack. So like, the moment I've always had that mentality, and I know it's like, kind of like scarred. Yeah. You grew up doing that, so it's mm-hmm. like, you're cool. It's a for habit. Now, yeah. You know? So it's like, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, man. That's. So a, you're like everyone's temporary. Yeah. Mm. 
Damn it. Yeah. That's deep. I can feel that. I can feel that. That's, <laughs> that's, that, that's deep. That's deep. And you, you, you say you were a military brat, so your dad was in the military. Did, did you yourself also join that? I that joined the military. Um, I joined in 2006. What um, branch? Army. Army branch. Oh, yes. that's why you're in Killeen. Yeah. Then I got a little bit of trouble. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, civilian wise. Uh, Got a little bit of trouble, and I like don't what? like reporting. What you do? Yeah, I got a little bit of trouble. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does got that a little mean? bit of trouble. Maybe he you doesn't know, want to elaborate. Flashing lights, you know, cops got in prison, went to prison. Um, but it's passed, you know. And I don't like reporting. My first case, I got ten years probation mm. uh, with a paid attorney, oh, which was no. horrible. That's horrible. See how they treat our militaries? Look at them. <laughs> Big facts. Yeah. Got ten years papers. Um, I reported like the first month. So did you deserve it? Because since you won't say what you did, do you? Think I mean, I did something stupid. Okay. Um, drugs, wrong people, and like you were selling them. Nah, you just, just like had on, them on them. you. I was on them. Oh, okay. On them, being around the wrong people, and like having money at an abundance. Like mm -hmm. you can never fuck up. You really got to fuck up to not get paid in the military. Like so, always knowing that you're getting pay paycheck on the first and fifteenth. Right. I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah. Sleep. Or... How old were you, though? Shit, I was young. Um, I was an E5 at 21. So if anybody knows anything about the military, like that's like you're a sergeant at 21 years right. old. So like I was making a some nice change, you know what I'm saying? And at a young age, being around the wrong people, thinking I was hood, you know what I'm saying? Right. In Fort Hood, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> thinking I was hood in Fort Hood, you know what I'm saying? I'm a suburban kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm very diverse. Um, I can you know, chill with the Germany and shit. You know, you know? <laughs> right. I can chill with the hoodlums and I can, you know, right. put on the tie. So like, it's just different. And I was fucking with the wrong people, wrong time, led to the wrong things. And I don't like reporting. So they gave me ten years probation, and I reported like the first month, and ghosted on them. Mm. So now I went on a run for sixteen months. They found me at Burger King in they, Pittsburgh. I'm at Burger King in, in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. I made a legal right turn in Pittsburgh. Cops flashed his lights. He was like, hey, you know you're wanted in Coriel County? <laughs> <laughs> Where's that? I didn't Where know. Is? And this is a true story. Like, they were like, you're you're wanted in Coriel County. And I was like, I've never been to Coriel that's County. What are you talking about? That's that shit, that Florida shit. Yeah. He was like, you've, you've, you've messed up in Coriel County. You're really wanted in Coriel <laughs> County. And I was like, no, I'm not. I've never been to Coriel County. He was like, so he goes back to his car. Five minutes later, he comes back. He's like, you ever been to Fort Hood? Copper's Cove, and I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "You got me, <laughs> you got me." Yeah, that's me. Yeah. So you thought you were gonna just, you were good. You thought you were good, or what? I just, are you forgot? I started doing my music back then too, like prior to me getting out of the military. So that's where like some of the bad things came around at the same time. Before I was just a gamer, going to work, with my kids. You know what I'm saying? And then I got into the music world. And then meeting the wrong people, you know, chilling, vibing with the wrong people. Nigga, you a hood nigga, nigga. You dope, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, let's go do some hood shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And led to the wrong shit. And yeah, man, I just didn't like reporting. And then music, I just thought that I could get famous and get an attorney to pay it off. You know what I'm saying? It makes any yeah. sense. Like, I've seen it in the movies. I thought the movies was real. You know what I'm saying? You, I got my, I got the person that you're looking for. He's willing to turn himself in. What deals are you willing to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I thought, like, we got you, dude. We got the money. We can work something out. But they caught me before. And that was like, in Pittsburgh, that was when the days but when we Wiz was blowing up. But you didn't know, oh, shit, I'm finna go to jail because this shit. This, I thought I could know. just, I really, I knew they were looking for me. already. But not looking for me, yeah. if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like, I'm in Pittsburgh. This yeah, shit. I'm in Pittsburgh. Out of sight, out of mind. And they said, blue warrant. I was like, I don't know shit about no blue warrant. I know warrant. what that means. You are yeah. not hood. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I know what all that shit means. And like, I know when the lights was behind warrant. me, I was, I was like, going yeah. my ass to jail. <laughs> yeah. That man warrant got a color. You got to be careful, man. So then I went, I went to jail, served some time, got out. And then got on parole. And then didn't report again. Ah. Uh. You was just disobedient. Said, Fuck this shit. Fuck it again. Like, I don't like reporting. Like, I do things in my life that I don't like you to know about. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. And it's a way of life, and I'm not going to stop it every day. Like, I smoke. You know what I'm saying? And I had the pee pee test. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a way of my life. <laughs> like, like I'm not I've doing never that. stopped smoking unless I was locked up. Like, I've never stopped smoking. Yeah. So, like, that's a big And I got, like, I got anxiety. You know, I can yeah. spaz. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I hate to say spaz, but. 
I can spark up at any, like, not any time, but if right. weed calms me down, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it was hard. And I was doing music, and that was, like, totally the part of my whole you on film. That. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Shit, I got arrested at American Idol. Mm. Oh, Auditioning? Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah. I have heard this story. Yeah. What yeah. The fuck we got to break this down. 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 He's bad. We got to break this down. We got to break this down. We got to break this down. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go so ahead. So, like, when I, when I told you I got out of prison the first time, I got put on parole. So, I served some time. They was like, okay, you can get on parole. I didn't report. Reported first month. Well, American Idol was coming to Austin. So, I was still doing music around the clean area. I was still doing music in Central Texas. I was going, jumping on debonairs talent shows and all that kind of stuff around the area but i wouldn't post it like i still knew i was on the run no one knew i was on the run so like the girl i was with didn't know i was on the run my mom didn't know i was on the run i just got out like i went and reported and then took off so the american idol was coming and i was like oh shit i'm gonna go try off american idol hmm let me go do it so i re- they had this online submission thing where you could sit there and go live and sing, and they'll tell you if you are okay to pass on to the different levels mm-hmm. of the auditioning phase. And I was like, hell yeah. So I did the online submission. Boom. Thought it was legit. Okay, gotcha. Go to the Driscoll Hotel in Austin. I go there. It's really American Idol. Like Paul Abdul, Randy Jackson. Yeah. Si- like Simon, everybody. I go to performance in front of Simon. I get the golden ticket. Like, I'm about to go. Like, it's on Facebook. I posted it. I'm about to leave. I'm about to leave. Call my mom. Mom, we made it. I'm gone. I don't care what. If I win, it's still, like, the promotion. Like, it's promo. I go outside. I ask my homie that was with me. I was like, hey, Emissary, you got a cigarette? He was like, nah, bro. We left him in the car. I was like, fuck. (sighs) Fuck. I need a cigarette, bro. I asked this dude that had been, like, following us with a laptop. Like, he had been following us with a tablet. It's like a blue, the old, like, the old uh, Android tablets. Yeah. But he had, like, one of them big-ass blue carrying cases. And he was just following us around all the time. Like, just following us, asking me questions. Like, hey, you here to perform? And I was like, hell yeah, I got to go and take it. I'm good. I asked him for a cigarette. So I'm smoking a cigarette outside. He was like, oh, well. I was like, what kind of cigarette you got, bro? He's like, I got Marlboro. I was like, beggars can't be choosers. I remember saying that. I was like, beggars can't be choosers. Well, when he pulled out a cigarette... I saw, like, you know that little Texas star mm-hmm. where the money clip? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was looked at him. I was like. I turned around. I sparked a cigarette. I looked at my homie. I was like, Emissary, that's that Marshall tag. That's a Marshall star. I know that Marshall mm-hmm. star. Yeah. He's like, bro, you're tripping. What are you worried about, bro? Like, my, like. It just hit me. Because like, he nigga, didn't know you're on the that run, you were bro. Like, yeah. You're, you, like, the first time I ever posted that, like, in a while that I was going to do anything was American Idol. Yeah. Like, American Idol was a time I was going to, I said it, I even posted it. I'm going, just did my online submission. Boom, I'll be at the Driscoll Hotel, Austin this day. Fuck. That same dude I asked for a cigarette was the marshal. Mm. And he was like, I turned around, and by the time I finished my conversation with my homie, he said, Jeffrey Smith? And I turned around, and he said, the last four of my social. He's like, if you run, I will tase you. I will tase you right here. Damn. Don't run. And then a black dude with some glasses. I remember some old, dust-ass New Balances. <laughs> he looked like a normal black, like a dude you see on Austin Street, like, chilling. Like, mm-hmm. we know, like... American Idol's going on. We just thought he was a normal dude. No. He's a fed. Like, yeah. just walking around, not even matching, dusty ass, new balances. But if he put his flannel shirt up, he had a gun, he had his Marshall badge, everything. He was like, my partner's right there. Don't do it. And then Mr. looked at me. And still to this day, I still got some stipulations of who could have been on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, if you paid attention to the days leading up to me leaving, people were acting kind of different. You know what I'm saying? Like, the girl I was with at the time, she was like, kind of standoffish, you know? I don't know if they had contacted her. My mom was not talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? And then the prior conversation I had to my mom, she was like, I love you, babe. You love, I love you, babe. And I was like, mom, I'm gone. And she was like, I love you, babe. Like, she knew. Yeah. That was it. Mm. And then it hit the news, and yeah, 
Mm. Fugitive found at the Driscoll Hotel in Mercado. Ah, my man's a fugitive. Wow. Uh, we need to pull that film up. Uh, <laughs> right? We need that footage. I, we, need, we need the footage. And then the second time Blue Warren got brought up again was I was in the car driving back in a Hyundai. Okay? That was... The Fed was driving a Hyundai. <laughs> Shout out E. He's running the table today. He's offended by that. He's like, hey. He was driving a Hyundai. Like, I'm in a passenger seat handcuffed. Just riding. In a Hyundai. Smoking cigarettes. From Austin all the way back to Coppers Cove. I know I probably probably supposed to say that. But, yeah, I was riding, smoking cigarettes. And then he was like, bro, you know, if you handle this blue warrant, you can go back to your, to the American Idol. I looked at him like, did you just say blue warrant? I ain't getting out, man. Try next year. I know I'm not. See you again. And never went back. That shit sunk, right? Did yeah. you just say blue warrant? The blue warrant? Yeah. Oh, I learned this before. Nah, I learned I'm that word before. Yeah, it's gonna act, it's gonna take a act of Congress for me to get out. Basically, like nah. Damn, well, like you it. know, your story kind of reminds me of Twenty One Savage story. Only the fact that Jay Z didn't come and save you. <laughs> yeah, and I wasn't getting deported. But you know, he was on the run. <laughs> but yeah. uh, so, uh, so th- th- this American Idol I- I- incident happened. You know what I'm saying? So you went there, you were auditioning, singing. So it did. Uh, the, on the That's singing crazy. side of things, you know what I mean? Like on, on the artist side, have you were you already releasing music? And yeah, stuff I was already the releasing. Time? I had dropped probably like three mu- like three materials on like back then. It was uh, Reverb Nation, uh, SoundClick. And that was why you were on the run or before? Yeah, on the run. Nice. I'm still doing shows and like the. I like how he's like unbothered. Like I was still like, doing everything, <laughs> like, like it was nothing. I would never go out unless I was doing a show. Like I wasn't the type, the person to go out and chill and vibe, and because I always knew if I break out, cops go around, I'm locked up. Right. Like if some pops off, cops get involved, I'm locked up. Like you I'm created the, a lot of trauma to yourself because like one's for your friends, mm. you can't even like be friends with anyone, and then two, you can't even go out in public and enjoy yourself because you always got to like just in and out, you mm-hmm. know? It's so sad. Mm. Are you free now? Yeah, I'm good. Paper great. free. Yeah. You're not on the run right now? No. Oh, okay. Not great. on the run at all. No. Anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> for me. Yes, I'm good. So, so, uh, so a- after you got all that cleared up, you know what I'm saying. At, at, at what point did you make this transition into working on uh, media? Um, K two five four, UITA Radio. Um, they were like two underground radio stations at in Killeen. Um, K two five four is where I started. Like that was like I had a dope ass, a dope ass like show. But it was non, no visuals. This is straight behind mm-hmm. everybody listening, tune in on the tune in app, and um, it was called um, Six as Fuck, Six as Fuck Radio. Yeah, and Six as Fuck Radio was dope. Um, and then we transitioned from K two five four to UITA Radio, still again on the tune in app, um, and I had Six as Fuck Radio again, and then Simply Dope Radio. So everything has been like around marijuana. So mm-hmm. Sick as Fuck, Simply Dope, Stinks So Good, um, Sweat It Out. You got cannabis in your system, sweat it out. Um, so like everything has been like that was my start. And then when it came to the media, I just wanted to be in front of the camera. Um, I was scared to do music again because of what I've been through, like, it was hard. You know what I'm saying? To fact, golden ticket and then to get like Yeah. It just sucks. And that's where the whole if anybody doesn't know, like anytime I perform, have anything to do with on camera, I go and throw up. Like, it's scary because that that golden ticket that trauma. Phase. Like, you got that trauma behind it's you. Just oh like, my God. This is great. And then, <laughs> it's just like, we're about to go do great. <laughs> like, it's just, it sucks. Like, it sucks. And it's like, I know people that are around me can probably feel it and they'll probably understand it now. Like, I don't trust people from even childhood, knowing you for two years, and then me having to do something for 10 years straight, like always on the, yeah, looking around, like, I just didn't trust people. Mm-hmm. So, so the music Gotta break that cycle. Man. Yeah, yeah. Going back to like the music question, the platform for media was for me to say, "Hey, I'm gonna get on with this media and then put my music out there." Like slowly creep my music out, and they'll be like, "Oh, you do music too?" Like hell yeah, I do. Like they yeah. want you to know that, but yeah, hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's where it came from. Well, you surprised the shit out of me the other night whenever you got up there and just, or, or was it outside? I outside. think it was outside. Yeah, he was just going in on the beat, and I was just like, ah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what he's doing. 
already know. Yeah. And I've had interviews, sit downs with important people with music, like starting, starting off mm. in Florida, like in high school, just singing at high schools and talent shows. It started off. So like I've met T Pain, I've met Pretty Ricky. Um, T Pain was like, "You're dope, but uh, you sound too much like me." I was gonna say, do, do, do we? I already know you get tons of T Pain jokes around this bitch. So yeah. is that like a comparison that's always happened? Or always what? happened. Always. Ever since he came on the scene. Um, is that someone who you really like? You hell yeah. With? Yeah. Um, T Pain, Wiz Khalifa, and Kanye West is like my influences. Mm. Like, so like the smoking, the Taylor Gang, just sweaters and all that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. That's that's Wiz. The whole singing and hooks and melodies is t-pain you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying and kanye he's just an asshole <laughs> but he's a genius you know what i'm saying right. so like yeah those are biggest influences why well, I, I think you still got the golden ticket yeah big facts you just gotta the work and hey the teal <laughs> and golden ticket yeah. <laughs> yeah. nah big facts big facts so the 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 media side man that when i first linked up with you i went to colleen you had a uh you had the aroma collective Uh, Collective. it it was a location where you also had your podcast and Mm -hmm. everything being done there he had a lot you had a live band playing at that time it was super dope um how what how how did that situation come about and 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 you know it it, is aroma still a thing or or aroma collective is really now just a mind state um Aroma stands for um, a reflection of my ancestors. Um, it's still gonna pop up. Yeah. That's I like that. Um, thank you. I a really lot like of people say they like mm-hmm. that. Um, I can't give it up. I can't. Um, oh shit! I might cry on this shit. Like, <laughs> I, I, like for real. Like I'm passionate. Pop our cherry. It would be a first for us. <laughs> it's like private podcast to you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? AWOL was my baby. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, Aroma was my baby. Like, pff, like the day them damn doors closed, like, mm. like, no PPP loan. Like, sorry if I added too many Ps. <laughs> but no PPP loan. Um, That was a time when Texas was giving out money for, like, I think the hardship, the COVID. Yeah. And, like, we used a lot of it. Me and my family, we used a lot of it, just a hope and dreams. And, like, AWOL, All Walks of Life, was the first start of Aroma. That was, like, like half of this building and had a studio, had the podcast area, had the merch, and it was dope. I had it for two years. Me and my family was running it. It was dope, like, dope, 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 dope. And then, but it was no business behind it. It was more a hangout. You know what I'm saying? And I was paying bills by, you know, paying bills. Okay? We're just going to say it like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was paying bills. Just making sure that I was making sure the shit was running up. It was a dope spot. And then I got the opportunity to get a bigger spot. Like, for just probably like $400 more. And at the time, I was like, hell yeah, $400 more? That ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? I could do this. But nah. Hmm. Like, that, that $400 was that business side. Because mm-hmm. that's when, like, Shit happens, and I didn't have nothing to back it up on. Mm-hmm. Um, I needed sponsorships. Um, I needed other shit to keep it moving. The building was dope. Like, it was so dope. Back like back patio, we didn't have to smoke inside. It had a, mm-hmm. a .5 acres in the back. Like, it was chill. Like, it was so dope, but it was no business side of it. And I got around the wrong people, wrong partners. I started doubting myself. Um, like, I can't do this myself. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too much. It's too much. My family can't do it. We can't do it. Not knowing, bro, you just did it. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. you just did it. Mm -hmm. And it was not no business attached to it. You was just doing it. Just add the business. Don't don't go no more. Don't add no more people. Just, you just need one more spec. And it just flopped. Like, it was a great thing. Just, I wasn't ready for it. And I don't think people were ready for it. Because the business side wasn't there. It was still ran as a hangout. Yeah. Mm. And not a business. No, I mean, he, yeah, we've had these talks. It's plenty. learning experience, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've had these talks plenty of times. You know, you, the business, the business is is is. You got to be on top of the business, keep it moving. Even us over here, you know, we're we're still learning the whole time. And with, during that same time period when COVID had happened and stuff, and there was all that relief money, like uh, we were unable to tap into any of it because of how I was filing my taxes at the time. Yeah. Like I've always paid my taxes on the money I make, but like I wasn't structured uh, in a in a proper business way. I was just sole proprietor, blah blah blah, mm-hmm. and, and so 
I didn't get to get access. I, I could show all my expenses, but on my income, like it was just, you know, it, mm-hmm. it, it looked horrible. So, uh, you know, in, in figuring all that out in that moment, it was an eye opener for me as well during that time. I was like, man, I really got to get on my business. Like after this, like there's no way I just missed out on all this free money whenever like I deserve, like I, I was in need of it. You know what I mean? Like we're in the entertainment industry. Like everything we were doing at that time, shows, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Like uh, we had we had big shows. We had booked uh, like in uh, Austin during South by all kinds of stuff get canceled that uh, – they really impacted us financially, and, and we couldn't we couldn't utilize any of those programs. So it was a big eye opener for me. Mm-hmm. Like at that point, I was like, never again. Like I I, I got to do better. And then they know? came out, yeah, and the PPP loan. <sighs> I was so mad. Like we we could have so used it, but I didn't have the business side. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah like that. So used yeah, it. That, that could have been the savior. Like for sure. Yeah, that definitely could have been it. Yeah, yeah. So. Right, r- right now you you're running your your wake and dank yes. uh, show, which is a morning based show uh, around uh, sports. Now I'm turning the afternoon, the night. And I, seen, I seen, I seen, <laughs> I seen, I seen, I seen, I seen. I seen. Well, it, it it it's a it, it's a show based around uh, uh, sports, right? Mm-hmm. Sports and hot topics. I, I I also went on wake and dank, but I didn't know shit about sports, so he changed the whole format for me. We did pop culture, <laughs> yeah. uh, but <laughs> I don't know nothing yeah. about no motherfucking sports. But, I'll go uh, on wake and dank and talk about sports, but that's gonna be about the players that would be hilarious that'd be hilarious the show around the person who comes in yeah. uh, at first i was sports 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 because i love espn right yeah and then always being an anchor on espn that would have been like a dream and then i got like the other side like the, the programming side i'm like oh this is dope like mm-hmm. i can basically tell you what to say like you know what i'm saying like yeah. whatever comes up that teleprompter you gotta read it right you know what i'm saying so like this is the other side of it so i just was like i want a, my own sports show yeah now it's just turning everything. How how you I I I know you was a, a dance instructor at one time, but yes. but but what? yeah, he, he he just taught a dance class next I door. Heard, there, I yeah. heard. Yeah, you uh, but but sports wise, what what sports did you play personally? Football, basketball, track. Okay, um, my man was an all around athlete. Um, my dad said I I raised I, I'm raising um athletes, not models. Okay. So like, cause I don't care what you look like. You gonna rate? You gonna and to be an athlete in my um, father's house, you had to have a three point five, and play sports. So like, it wasn't just like mm-hmm. you got to be good in the field. Hell no, nah, to be an athlete you got. So you have brothers too? Um, I didn't get it. I was the only child till I was thirteen. Mm. And then, and they so just that was tough, kids. right? Because all yeah. the pressure was on you. Yeah, they just started having kids. I don't know why. Super late, but yeah. <laughs> Okay. Cause your ass got older. <laughs> They're like, all right, he about to leave. They can leave the house. Living, yeah. Do you yeah. do you feel like uh, like I I I hear you talking about you know your 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 dad being into you know the the sports and and the military. Now he's a preacher. Yeah, yeah. So like, did did do you feel like his influence what made you make any of those decisions going to the military or getting into sports? I was or a rebel as a kid. Um, you know, one of those kids you, that never knew they had it so good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. they left the house. You're yeah. a spoiled brat. Yeah. Not spoiled. No. Um, I got necessities. I wanted more. That mm-hmm. makes sense. I got what I needed, and I didn't know that it was actually more than what I actually needed. But I was never spoiled. Like, I had to work for mine. So. Yeah. Even still, though, I'm in, sure in, in, you yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. I had to work for mine. Even still, in, in being a rebel in ways, you still somewhat kind of followed in some of the same footsteps and going to the mm-hmm. military and stuff. So, you know. I, I moved I, out the day I graduated across the street. Yeah. <laughs> still went across the street, took showers and ate, huh? Did <laughs> they pay that for you to do that? No, I just was a rebel. I was like, Mom, um, you know that argument that you have with your family? Well, you don't like my shit, you can get out. Okay, bet. Bet. <laughs> bet. And it was but like, did you still cross the street all the time? I used to go and steal food out my mom and daddy <laughs> pantry. They're like, if I was, if I had no food at the crib, hell yeah. My first apartment that I got because I was a little rebel, like eighteen mm-hmm. years old. I'm out this bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. As soon as I graduated, but well, I started like going and taking like picture frames off my mom's wall. Like I need this, <laughs> I need this mirror too, mom. Like, <laughs> like I moved out. We got in a big ass argument. Two days later, my mom, my my, my dad was washing his car outside. And I was like, when I, when I say you across the street, it was really across the street. Like, it was <laughs> four former high schoolers, like, just graduated, living in a crib. Like, and we seriously moved. I just was like, fuck this. I can afford it. I was working at Foot Locker at the time. And I was like, I can afford this. And I really moved. And I was like, hey, Dad, what's up with your son? I'm going to work later. <laughs> like, right after the argument, how's mom? She's good. Like, be over Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I didn't have to listen to him. Yeah. Like, that was it. I wanted to, you know, you know, I was riding a little, little crotch rocket. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, uh, speak of this influence from from your father. You say now he he he's a preacher. He's a preacher. Is is, is he's a vocal minister. A vocal minister. He leads a multi million dollar church. Mm. Um, mega church is what they're called. Yeah. Um, he leads a ma- mega ch- church in Bossier, Louisiana. Okay. Um, my dad used to sing with Kurt Franklin. Wow. My sister sang with Kurt Franklin. Hezekiah Walker. Um, so music is just all uh, through your blood. Big. He, my sister's probably the best singer I've ever seen face to face. My wow. sister can sing. Um, and when we were in Germany, she got brought up to a record deal. And at the time, that's when like techno and share was out. And what am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. And my my dad did not want her singing that. Like, no, sorry. No. Yeah. But he, re- I think my dad regrets that. Cause you never know where she could have been. You know right. What I'm saying? Like, it was just that popish phase, and they wanted to turn her into like a fake European Aaliyah. It was just like, Aww. nah, she didn't want. Would have been vibe. dope though. It would have been dope. Might have been dope. Might have been dope. European Aaliyah. I, <laughs> I'll be the Mexican European Mexican Aaliyah. Whatever the hell you want. Like, <laughs> I'll be the European Selena. What's up? <laughs> but like, I call myself the black sheep of the family, but it's just like I. I pushed myself away from them because for 10 years I didn't talk to them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I didn't talk to y'all. I didn't want y'all to know anything about me and my whereabouts. Um, but for times I would talk to them, they would be like, you know someone called for you today? And I'd be like, who? They said that you need to, like, call them. And I knew who they were talking about. Like, oh. and then one time my mom got the phone call. They said that if I knew your whereabouts, I could get in trouble, too. And I was like, you know what? From now on, I'm not calling you. I'm all right. So mom. you cut your family off. Like, yay and nay. Yeah. If they called me or they hit me up, I would respond. But I didn't want to, like, put them in no kind of shit. You know what sense? Yeah. Like, no, I'm good. If they call y'all, you really tell them. You don't know where the fuck I'm at. Like. Because <laughs> you really don't. You don't know where the fuck yeah. I'm at. Like, everybody would ask me, you still in Texas? Uh-huh. And that's all I would tell them. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Can I get your mailing address? No. Can't do it. No. Can't do it. My man's scarred for life. Crazy, yeah. My man's scarred for life. Issues. We can sit on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And now fatherhood has has been passed down to you as well. You you are a father out here with your own kids. And now you having to navigate these waters. You know what I mean? How that's going for young notes? Three prior from a marriage and four in the house now. Uh-huh. Oh shit. Seven kids. Uh, me and my wife, you know, my her kids are my kids. So we just recently had a four-year-old. You know what I'm saying? Not recently a four-year-old. But yeah. <laughs> Our youngest one is four. There you go. So there you like, go. We recently had a four-year-old. Me and my wife's old. kids together. He's four. Yeah. Um, King Elias Smith. That's my little dude. Um, King Smith. That's what we call him. That's his. That he don't have no nickname. That's his shit. Like, mm-hmm. what up, King Smithers? Um, he will be more. He will be me times three. Yeah. But I don't want him to be like me. If that makes sense. Um, just be you. Um. He's a shit. He sings, dances, twerks. Games. <laughs> games. <laughs> my daughters, mom, I have my oldest daughter. She's about to leave for school. Um, her plan is to go to UMHB for two years and then Baylor for two years. Mm. Um, that's why everybody jokes now talking about, you might as well just move to Waco. Right? Yeah. Just move to Waco. yeah. Um, then I got two middles. One's in that gymnastics. One's in, like, finding herself. You know, she's starting to... F- <laughs> smell boys so mm. she's in that phase <laughs> <laughs> and then my um second oldest she's in pittsburgh right now uh she'll be going to she'll be a senior next year and then there's both both middle kids mm-hmm. so yeah oh man gotta hope that's a big old family Shit. tree right there yeah. man okay no smith all across the map man. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Oh man, you uh you you uh I'm, I'm gonna take a break from this conversation, man, and and, and jump into a game real quick, man, right. because um you, you you do a lot of what I really like about your shows, man. The stink so good and, and and all that stuff is you incorporate a lot of different segments, you know, uh, uh topics and and mm-hmm. and one of the things you always incorporate is shoes, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, 
Where, and, and that's a segment called uh, Dope or Nope. And, and it's always hot, yeah. hot drops, right? Like, bro, like new, new releases new shit. and stuff. New shit. All right, so uh, we do a thing on here, man. It's called Mount Rushmore, right? Okay. But and normally we do it on like artists and stuff like that. Uh, but I wanted to do one, man. I wanted to do your Mount Rushmore of kicks of shoes. Ooh, Ooh. that is pretty cool. <laughs> it's only four. Red October's, Nike, Kanye's. Ooh, Adidas. Um, oh, Nike. Oh yeah, Nike, that's the Red Nike. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, band I classic. I like silhouettes. Um, shoes that have like. The dopest of silhouettes that you can add any color to. My man tagged Vans in his most recent photo. Yeah. I seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Vans, I got so many Vans. So many Vans. Big shout out. Um, Sponsor that man, Vans, please. Um, I love the Air Force One. So like any color of Air Force One. Mm. Um, back in the day when they had the premiums with the different kind of leathers and fatter laces, and then they added the leather um, la- laces to them mm-hmm. with the gold tips. Like I like certain things that make a shoe dope, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then the Jordan Eleven, patent leather. Okay, he knew exactly. All exactly. Four, he, he, yeah. had, he had it down. He had yeah. it down. He like, knew in his mind. You, I, so, so let me ask you this: how, how many pairs of those shoes do you have in your collection? Red, I, um, I would probably say I'm one of the only people in Texas, probably out of hundred, to have a pair of Red Octobers. I seen a, see, I seen a, so good. I seen a pair get sold one time. Uh, at um, if I'm not mistaken, at Hype Waco, um, not mm-hmm. n- not at Hype Waco, at a at a he, Ryan Waco Ryan Ryan used to throw a, a shoe show. It's called Waco Got Souls, mm-hmm. and I if I'm not mistaken, I seen a pair go uh, at that bitch, bro. For that's one of those investments price. where um, it's not even an investment. Yeah, that, yeah, my Red October's are investment, but it's one of those uh, things where you just blew money, like one of those wish you can get it back. But now, since like reselling is like major. I don't want. I'm glad I kept those. Right. Um, but how, those are in a case. How much were those whenever you bought? Whenever you purchased those? Um, six fifty. Six fifty. Yes, and that was when I was in the military, so I could like spend it. it six fifty. How often have you wore them, and how much Three are they times. worth now? Three times. Because the moment I wore them, it was like one of those viral moments before they were viral. Like you knew people didn't have these. Like this was a drop, but none of y'all have them. Like. These are special. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, hold up. And then a few years later, it's like Sachi's, like my Sachi chain reactions. I, I didn't put them in the top four because, like, they're too hypish. It's, it's like a shoe that I wish I never bought. Right. But I love them and I know how expensive they are. So I barely. The ones you're wearing out there, yeah. them hoes is fresh. Yeah. But they're fresh. so hypish. It's a shoe that's like. I love it. Oh. <laughs> it's like. Uh, yeah. I wish I would never bought these. I wish I because you can only wear them a couple times. It's not like a shoe you can wear over. I wear them bitches every day. I burn them <laughs> bitches up. You got me. I've been wearing the same pair of Yeezys for a year and a half. You got me fucked up, but man. I love. I love. Yeah, I love kicks. I love kicks. How much of Versace kicks? At the time, there were twelve hundred. Ooh, ooh. So like at Aroma and at a Wall, we had our times where the times were high. You know what I'm saying? We had. High business times. Like, mm-hmm. we would throw a, we got a thing called a um, Dankin paint. It's basically like sip, sip yeah. it and twist. Yeah, sip it and twist. Y'all did that. Y'all mm-hmm. did that for the birthday. Um, Puff and paint. Puff yeah. and paint. Yeah. So it's just, it's just like, you know, we did that and we ran a couple tours with that. Of course, the tours around the city, brought it to people's houses. Um, so we made our money off of that. And then we had Dank Fest, which was like every three course meal, vendors, stuff like that that we did in Austin. Um, so we made some bread at times. Did I do the right things with the bread? No. I bought like, you know, good Sachi's. events, blowout. <laughs> Shopping spree. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, a good, you know, the build up was great. Great turnout. Let's go spend it, baby. You know. So so the the the, the Sachi's are the one you regret the most? Out of every shoe, shoe purchase ever? Yes. Yeah. Chain reactions. Yes. Mm. Hands down. Mm. Hands down. Mm. All right. And me selling my PlayStations. My PlayStation um, Premium Forces. I should never sold it. Oh. And I sold it for, like, some stupid, you know, when you, like, just need money. You know, you just, a bill might have came up. Or, you know, you might have heard a spouse just bickering a little bit behind your ear. Like, you need to get rid of some of those shiz. You need to get rid of some of those shiz. You sure got a lot of shiz. And I just, I don't know. At that moment, I just needed the money. And... Sold them, and now they're like fourteen thousand dollars. And I sold them for like eight hundred. 
Damn. Hit my whistle five times. <laughs> I can't yeah. even whistle. God damn. And like the worst regret I take in sneakers not getting a pair of the Carhartt M&Ms, and I had a chance of getting them. Mm. And now they're like eleven thousand. Mm. Damn. Yeah. Mm. That shoe game is crazy, man. Shoe game is shoe crazy. game is crazy. Shout out uh, Ron Serrano and Hype Waco, man. You, uh, if y'all sure. need shoes, tap in with my boy. I went in there and the only pair that I liked that were my size, I think they were like three fifty or something, and I was like. They are really nice, but I'm not spending that much money. On. <laughs> and I really wish someone will buy them for me. <laughs> like, I love shoes, but I'm not one of the ones that don't wear them. That makes sense. Like, I have my shoes that, right. like, that are expensive. I know resale later on in life, I, I, so I won't wear them. But then you have the ones that you do wear, and you just, I'm right. just going to wear them. I'm not like a sneaker hyper, like... I hate hypers. You yeah, know like, what I'm saying? I own these. I own these. <laughs> I got bots to buy me those. Like, no, bro, you're cheating the game, bro. Like, yeah. Let it be fair. And like, cause can you buy these shoes on credit? Because I would yeah. definitely do yeah. credit. Klarna. Um, Shout out Klarna. You can get uh, private hip hop services on Klarna as well. Because right? um, growing up, Klarna, you can get like when you said spoiled, <laughs> anything. I would get like Jordans on Christmas, but everything else was a two for eighty nine. You know what I'm saying? With Foot Locker had mm-hmm. two for eighty nine. Get some mm-hmm. Reebok Classics and some Shell Toes. And some white tees, five for twenty. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) For sure. That was my shit. You know what I'm saying? So like, I used to keep. My dad told me, taught me how to clean shoes. Life was good then. And I used to just (laughs) clean shoes. I mean, I used to have like, don't get me wrong. Anytime he would brought up two for eighty nine, I would go get the same pair of like shell toes. So I would have like eight pairs of whites. You know what I'm saying? Like these are the ones that I'm about to show off for my girl. You know what I'm saying? These are the ones I cut the grass with or something. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. They were always two for eighty nine, but I had a lot of pairs. Right. Hey man, love his shoes, man. Love his motherfucking shoes, man. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the the dope and oak segment is is really dope to me, bro. Because I I'm not somebody who stays up to date on shoe drops. You know what I'm saying? So watching dope or nope, I feel like I I'm learning about the shoe drops mm-hmm. as them hoes is hitting. And uh, you low key gonna make me spend money one day, bro. Watching <laughs> yeah, them. So, yeah, yeah. Hopefully I get you know, big shots out the full surface run, um, on complex, um, Trinidad James. He's a big inspiration behind that dope or nope. Yeah. Um, he made it made it possible for people to have a whole segment talking about shoes. So if you can get like mini content talking about shoes, they have a whole show, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So like the sneaker world is huge. Yeah, no, nah, um, for sure, for sure. And yeah, big shout out to Trinidad James. Yeah. So uh, ha- having that incorporated the Stink So Good, uh, for the people that don't know, Stink So Good is actually, uh, it's like a talk show style um, um, show that now has is on the private hip hop platform. You film it here every other Friday mm-hmm. um, with a live audience in the studio. Um, and the the subjects are uh, what what pop culture, pop uh, culture, dope inter- or no? Yeah, it's music, pop culture with a twist. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. It's super entertaining, super dope. Your first two guests were actually Mary Jane yeah. and and Andrew, Andrew. G. Great that episode. episode was fucking great, yes. bro. That episode was fucking great. Yes. And then he backdoored it with an episode with Big R and JP the Pyrexican man. And Big R got a little tipsy in that motherfucker. Yes, that shit did. was super he was entertaining. Slumped. He was slumped. <laughs> I, I I I was watching. I look. I, I was in the, I was in the crowd watching. Like, oh, I'm finna screen record this mm-hmm. he was on the stage bro was just sitting there rubbing his head <laughs> he was just rubbing his head wait well, like, like thinking about what he was gonna say yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah stick so good can get hectic um <laughs> it started with you know it was it was heavy cannabis inspired inspired yeah, yeah. before we used to like it boom down yeah like it used to be very legal like, yeah. a very mm-hmm. bandful show a very uh, yeah. that that was the show I originally went down yes. to Colleen to do right yes, with the live band and stuff. So good, yeah. Um, great vision behind it. I still hope that one day that will that vision because the live band, the whole Jay Leno twist, Tonight Show twist. Like I love mu- live music. Like it's scripts, possible. With- like script says, yeah. it's mm-hmm. nothing better than knowing you can really perform. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, without a beat, um, without background vocals, like mm-hmm. that's talent. You know that's what I'm saying? True. Like. That's that's Motown days. That's mm-hmm. that's that's the shit that real music is based on. Like, um, and I feel like technology has taken away from that. Yeah. Um, so that's what whole stink so good is. It's so dope. It's like a gumbo that it stinks so good. Right. Yeah. Well, I brought that up because I'm still not done with Mount Rushmore. So I got one more for you, okay, right? And and, and 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 it's different than uh than than any other ones we've done before as well. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so this I'm one ready. right here, man. I want to do your Mount Rushmore of media personalities bro Ooh, which can be anybody it can be to tv show host or late night yeah oh, oh he said it's easy god it's damn easy. he's prepared it's easy okay 
If anybody knows me, my inspiration, how I dress, is Rob Durdick. Okay. okay. Um, Rob Durdick was that man to me growing up. You know, I'm DC. I used to wear DC shoes and um, thought I, I was a skater I, for a I, while. I, I didn't expect this. I, um, I can see that. I can tell. And Colleen, I, I can like, see I it threw, now. I threw skateboard events. Um, have you been to the the skate park in Waco? Mm, yes, I have. Okay, right. Well, I've been. To I mean, like in recent years. In, yes. I was yes. like, yeah, yeah, they the were doing and everything they got yeah, down there. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, if it ain't any skate park, skate park in Central Texas, I've been to it. Mm. Um, I know you ain't skating them no more. Yeah, I ain't skating no more. I got bad knees. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was never a big skateboarder. Um, but the time that I spent in Colorado, that was the that was the majority of the time that I've had that weren't two years yeah. or more. So like, I graduated from Colorado. So mm-hmm. like, yeah. snowboarding is big. Mm-hmm. I love snowboarding. Um, so Rob Dirty. Rob Dirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one, bro. Sway. Okay. Hell yeah! Shout he was out, an X Sway. gamer. He started out at X Games. So For real? yeah, report next game. Oh, Sway. Okay. Yeah. When he had the dreads and mm-hmm. he had a little shout out Sway. Bye. Tip, 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 tip. If you ever meet Sway before you walk up to meet him, make sure you follow him. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm just, he might put you on the spot. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, he might he might fuck you up in front of everybody. Shout out Sway. Look at this. Um, I learned my lesson. <laughs> I'm like, you ain't following me either. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, Bruh, that's what I, I should have said. You. I would. Talking about oh, sway. My bad. My bad. Talking about sway. Rob Durdek. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Durdek. <laughs> Rob Durdek. <laughs> Rob Durdek. Sway. Free from 106 in part. Okay. Okay. Her style was fire. <laughs> All right. Like free was mm-hmm. fire, and she could talk. Um. He just shit on AJ. I used to okay. Win. Nah. I used to win AJ. AJ, to AJ like was dope, but free part. made that show. Nah, for sure. For sure. Um. And Big Tigger. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that question. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like those answers. Because they, they're an honorable mention, Shannon Sharp. There ain't no honorable mention on, my, on a goddamn Mount well, Rushmore. If they could, if they could chisel nah. on the head on the side, it'd be Shannon Sharp. Hell yeah. nah. Because he's, <laughs> he's one of the best sportscasters to me ever. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. How, so uh, on, on the Wake Day show, man, you have so many stats, bro. Do you watch every single game? Like every day, every, every, every time there's a game, or are you watching every game, or are you just catching All right, up on stats? I'm a stats? vamp. So, um, me and my son are vamps. So, like when I say that, we sleep during the day and stay up at all night. Like, um, so from like eight o'clock is when I clock in. We've talked this about this before. Yeah. From eight o'clock at night is when I clock in. So, I have the two screens. He says my setup. So one screen I have like. YouTube TV playing all every single game highlighting red zone NFL NBA um, game zone it's just going off on this side I got Canva Pro so I'm just sitting there looking at the games the moment stats come across the board is like I'm already bringing it in you know what I'm saying like it's a way for me to stay on top of everything yeah and then um, I have shoe release tickers on my phone so if one drops I get it so it's like I'm having to stay up and um, if I didn't do that, I would be lazy. Like, yeah. I just got to stay up on it. Yeah. yeah. That's basically it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we're, we're, we're very excited to have you here at the Private Hip Hop, oh, man. Yeah. You've been killing it, man. You, you, you're not just, uh, you're not, you didn't just bring your show over here, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you, you, which you did bring your show over here, mm-hmm. but you also are helping produce this show. You know, shout out E behind the, behind the, the, the ones and twos today, but it's usually notes. You also, man, have been, uh, uh, helping with all kinds of stuff over here, man, on the stream side and, and helping us, uh, uh, at, kind of take our production up a notch as to what we're trying to execute as well. So, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. You, you, you and been, that came from my it, son. What do you mean? Um, he's a gift and a curse. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? What the um, hell? he's Talk a gift. Up. When I say like he's born, he's my son. He's he's great. But one day, you know, just went to go pick him up out the crib, and I heard two pops. Like, and I was like, ooh, my knee don't feel the same. Um, tore my ACL and my MCL hmm. picking him up. Did I take care of myself when I was doing the fitness all the time in the dance classes? No. Um, I'm a fitness trainer who's never got a massage before. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Right. I've never been to the chiropractor. That doesn't make any sense. We gotta go to like, the chi- bro, I want to go to the chiropractor see right what I'm saying? now. Like, Me bro. too. Those certain but... things that most fitness trainers or like heavy gurus of fitness, they go get that relaxation time. They mm-hmm. get that my me time. And I never got that shit. Like, I was just a goer. Like, drink some water. Anytime somebody had a problem, drink some water. You ever drink your water today? Like, mm-hmm. are you feeling bad? Did you drink water today? Like, <laughs> you gotta drink a whole gallon. Water, you gotta drink yeah. a whole gallon. Yeah, whole gallon. Whole gallon. Um, and I never took care of myself. 
And then at one time I got that rest in time when my son was born, it just happened. So I sat in the garage for four years, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like studying, what can I do in this bitch? Like, what can I do in here? Like media, what can I do in here? Give me the cameras, like I'm not doing anything. And that's where the media, like the whole podcast that came about. I already had the K254 to UIT background, but like, okay, you can put somebody's face behind the camera. Let's do this. And that yeah. happened to be COVID time too. So that's when everybody just, yeah. Lost and bought, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, okay. Super, super That's cool. why I say gift and a curse. Gift mm-hmm. and a curse, man. Shout out the kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, w- one of the things that's always tied in with your show, man, is is this character, man. We see him everywhere. <laughs> Jeffrey Bodine, boy, you brought him out, boy. I'll wait for you to call him in. Jeffrey Bodine. Fucking rot. I'll wait for you to call him. He was just waiting. I'm ready, boy. I'm ready, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Bodine is a is 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 a hell of a character. Uh, I don't know exactly where he came from or who or or, or 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 where you came up with this at, but he definitely leaves an impression every time he makes an appearance. Uh, he uh, every celebrity that we brought through so far has got to meet Jeffrey Bodine, uh, and they, they all love it. Um, in Jeffrey Bodine voice, tell us a little bit about Jeffrey Bodine. Jeffrey Bodine came from the show Beverly Hillbillies back in the day. There was a character named Jeffrey Bodine. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? They just called him the Bodine Bull. You okay. know what I'm saying? Bodine Bull. And then when uh, the first, one of the first fights I ever had in my life was in a uh, basic training. Okay. A rock. There was this boy named Timothy Dance. <laughs> he was. <laughs> <laughs> He was from Tennessee. Uh, all right, he was racist as fuck. I'm talking about racist in a son bitch. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. He used to call us hooties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yahoos. For real, if you go down to Louisiana, they call naggers. They call them wahoos. All right. That's what they Why? call them. That's what they call them. I don't know. Yahoos. All right. Well, we got in a fight because he was racist. Um, I'm not going to tell you who won because it was a, a fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good fight when it's a <laughs> it, was, it was a fight. Uh, it was a fight. In basic training, it was like, you know, you wait till a certain time to everybody go to sleep and you used to fight in a certain corner. That's that's what that's what you should do. Like, you talking shit today? All right, wait till after everybody goes to sleep. Right. We're gonna fight. And there was always a point inside the room with no cameras, like prison. Or run. Yeah, yeah, you gotta hit that corner. Hit that, that corner. corner. Um and we fought and uh we came out to be best friends and he talked like this. <laughs> <laughs> He talked like this, and like we had battle buddies in basic trainings. And after we fought, the drill sergeants put us together. And like at first, we still hated each other. So I always mock them, like, "Where are you going today?" <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, "Fuck you." <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so it was just going on forever and ever and ever. And that's where it came up. He was like, man, you need to keep going with this. And, like, still to this day, me and that man talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love like, came I from gave him a, I gave him an inspiration. Like, I was his Negro intervention. <laughs> there you, go. you converted him. He's yeah, changed, he's changed him. his yes. ways. And now he's married to a black girl, too. No! <laughs> no! My man out here doing humanitarian uh, work. Hey, he was, God, he was, damn. We, it's so funny with him too. Like Del, we went to basic. Himself, <laughs> like it's <a> hat. <laughs> we went to basic together. We went to AIT together. Our first duty station was Korea. We all went together. So like I was with that dude for like years, years. Yeah. And I think it was like a sign. Like people gives like give me a sign, Lord. That was the sign. Like, yeah. Yeah. God put you <laughs> in that right man's there. life. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, man. Well, in Jeffrey Bodine fashion, man, we're gonna do some rapid fires. That's too all funny. Right. All right, man. We're gonna get, we're gonna do it. You know, some of the some of the classics, man. <laughs> <clears throat> in the couch, sativa. In the couch. There you go. iPhone <laughs> or Android? iPhone. Winter or summer? <laughs> Winter. I like my boots and my coats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Winter. <laughs> I love winter, man. I like some boots. You know, a lot. Producing music or produ- or producing visuals? Producing visuals. Okay. Gold or diamonds? Mm. Diamonds. Diamonds. But golds are 
gold is some bitch, though. I like gold. <laughs> it never loses value either. Diamonds know. fluctuate based on the person's opinion. Yeah. Jeffrey Bodine is very educating. <laughs> for, 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 for his voice. Yeah. <laughs> Rap or R&B? R&B. R&B. <laughs> R&B. I like my country, though. I like my Shania Twain's. I like that. I like that. Uh, CDs or MP3s? CDs. We need to make her money. Yeah. Uh, Apple Music or Spotify? Apple Music. Hostess or Lil Debbie? Hmm. Mm. Little Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Little Debbie. Cars or trucks? Trucks. This one was actually given to me from like you. balls on the back of trucks. Oh. Like oh. 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 Let them drop. <laughs> 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 they have those same kits for the back of the Crocs. You know that, right? I don't know. I don't know you know balls on the back of them. All right, all right. Just throwing that out. There. I like to put my Crocs in sports mode. <laughs> <laughs> this next one, uh, uh, Note Smith gave me one time before an episode. George Lopez or Gabriel Iglesias? George Lopez. Okay. He was like the Mexican home improvement. <laughs> <laughs> I got one for you right here. Richard Pryor or Dave Chappelle? Dave. Mm. Richard paved the way. Yeah, right. He was so good, they had to ban his ass off TV. It's, it's rapid fire. We don't need all that oh, shit. Lord. Right. Uh, <laughs> Explanation. Hey, already. Let's go. Hey, I love Richard Pryor, too. For some, for some. Uh, Nike or Adidas? Neither. They do people dirty. Nike. <laughs> <laughs> Extrovert or introvert? Oh, all right. He's fucking confused. He's, he's confused. I don't really know about this. He wants to get out so bad, yeah. but he doesn't trust me. He <laughs> fucking hates everybody. Like. Uh, um, I think I feel you. extrovert. Yeah. Okay. I like being out, but it, I'm very cautious. Netflix or YouTube? Mm. Netflix. Booties or boobies? Who boys, thighs and knives includes them butts. <laughs> <laughs> he's stupid. <laughs> Dark liquor or clear liquor? Dark. I love my clear. I, finna, okay. I love some douce too with Henny. <laughs> Texas or Florida? Florida. What? What? Get this I man know. the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> Miami or Houston? Come on now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on clear now. Clear water or? <laughs> <laughs> Blunts or joints? Blunts. All day. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Down south or dirty south? It's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so dirty. And the last one. I ask a lot of people. You've heard me ask a lot of people this. 100K cash or a million dollar credit limit? What you doing? I need that credit. It ain't my damn money. Mm-hmm. Right. Fucking rock. All right. What's the first thing you're doing with that credit? <sighs> <laughs> All about that motherfucking it's merch. merch, man. Flip it. Okay, okay, dope, dope. I like it. Shout out Jeffrey Bodine in the motherfucking <laughs> building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also has an animated version. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, he's the, coming back. <laughs> and if you don't know, if you don't know, prescription got one too. Coming soon. Yes, it does. Mm-hmm. Fuck with me. Has a band bun on. That's gonna be cute. While, while we got Jeffrey Bodine in the building, I would love to pass this to Mary Jane and get these SMKs yes, going. I've been going. waiting to talk keep to you. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, so this I'm gonna do with ath- athletic women. Smash, athletic Mary, women. kill. Okay, this this is okay. dangerous. Okay, so we'll do uh, Layla Ali, Serena Williams. <laughs> and Brittany Griner. Oh, Lord. She gave me a... <laughs> I'm taking Layla. That's off the rip. The other two are not into me. The rock, How do you know? You say Brittany Griner. Who else? Uh, Layla Ali and Layla Serena Ali. Williams. Serena Williams. Serena Williams. She likes rich white people. You sound, <laughs> you sound very rich and white. I'm not rich. Oh. He just said I'm educated. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> you can be smart and broke. <laughs> you really can. Um, well, I'm smashing. Is it Smash Dash, that other one? like uh, Smash, smash Mary Kill. Smash. I'm sm- um, I'm a Mary Layla. Okay. She's the... I'm going to kill Brittany Griner. <laughs> 
Damn, okay. are you Russian? No, I'm gonna kill her. Uh, she's no, she's too tall and too manly. Um, <laughs> Serena, I'll just smash her. She's manly too. <laughs> man, she's thick. You see, so Layla's eyes? not manly to you. Layla is more feminine to me. I feel than the other two. She has more feminine qualities. Like she's beautiful. Like don't tell me all the other ones ain't beautiful. But she's like you're not blinded by appealing. Serena booty. No, I like Serena. Like no, Serena then went through like a face change. She ain't the old Serena no more. Look her up. <laughs> Look her up, Miss. You might be Cosmos. Right. <laughs> Well, maybe that's why I think she looks good. No, she got like some thing wrong with her face. Go check it out. You want me to pull it up? Mm -mm, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she's beautiful. Shout she out to is me. beautiful, but she's went through a change. Some people don't need cosmetic surgery. Let the beauty like age. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that. Look, some people don't need it because it. Oh, she got botched. Yeah, she got botched. Some people look like they got pit bull bodies. They got got. And, yeah, <laughs> chihuahua heads. They don't look right. <laughs> you can't have old parts and new face. They don't look right. <laughs> like they don't look right. Or new parts and old face. Yeah. Sometimes that's not good either. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm. It's like bitch. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you can't put LED lights on the box Chevy. It just don't look right. Yeah. <laughs> it don't look right. Ah, that's that Florida shit. <laughs> <laughs> give, give him another round. Give him another round. Okay, we'll do R&B. We'll do R&B ladies. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Uh, we'll do Janae Ieko, mm. SZA, mm. Mm. and Queen Nyjah. Hmm? Who's Queen, the last one? Queen Nyjah. SZA and Janae Ieko. Janae Ieko is so beautiful. I'm marrying her. And she can sing. And I've like... Ever since the Sail Away album, I've been in tune with her. Um, that man named the album. Um, I'm marrying her. The second one was who? SZA. She crazy as hell. She bad. And she bad. Queen Nyjah. I seen her live twice. Queen Nyjah. Mm. Had a wardrobe malfunction out there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? You seen her or her? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, see what you did there. Nyjah, I'm smashing. And I'm killing. No, I'll, I'll smash SZA and kill Naja. Okay. But Janae Aiko, I'm marrying her. Lockdown. Lockdown. <laughs> I like oh, my wow. Islanders. I like the Asians. I like exotics, too. She's nice. <laughs> <laughs> She's beautiful, man. She might be crazy, too. She might be. But I'm sure we all are. Not everyone. No. You got to sometimes speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I included myself. Sometimes you just speak for yourself. Ah uh, well, all right. For the uh, appreciate Jeffrey Bodine, man, for checking in. You know, what I'm saying? I'll go back to my regular talk. There he is. There he is. There he is. There he is. Notes, notes is back in the building, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> well, before we get out of here, bro, we do one more thing, man. That uh, we we, we ask everybody, mm -hmm. and it's called uh, speak it into existence. So if Note Smith could speak something into existence one year from now, what would it be? I know you got a lot of goals, man. You got a lot of dreams. My man's driven. What's 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 a year from now, speak that shit into existence. For my family to be living good off of what I do. Mm. Um, that's it. Like, I put in applications, I put in resumes to like ESPN, Disney, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, portfolios of what I had, even graphics, templates, everything, 3D visuals, everything. I've, I've tried, like, I know the quality. I know. I know how. I know what I can do. You know what I'm saying? When that division's there, you know what I'm saying? I just got more education, more time. Like I can get there. You know what I'm saying? Like I just want what I do, what I love, to take care of my family for once. You know what I'm saying? Like for once. Like I'm tired of people telling me I'm talented. You know what I'm saying? I'm being broke. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like fuck talent. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like I'm tired. I've been that way since high school. Yeah. I was a thespian, not a lesbian, but a thespian. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I used to act. I used to do all that. And like, I've been that way from a kid. Like, you're hella talented, but never have nothing to speak for. It. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Never have nothing to. This is what Show my talent brought me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I just want that. Like, yeah. I want it for the, for me to finally be like, I told y'all. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
for me to look at my wife, I know she going I know she gonna sit there and be like, You I know you gonna fucking say this. But for me just to look at her and be like, ha <laughs> <laughs> like, like your investment was worth it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I really it's a joke around the house, but we say it. Like yeah. I know you I know you were here for me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's hard being an entrepreneur. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? Like I know this like this would be my shout out to my wife. I know it's hard. You know what I'm saying? Like I know it's mind boggling. And you just sitting there like, trust the process. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna be straight. Just trust me. And we go through hard times, you know what I'm saying? Like we do. And like I just want success to finally pay yeah. off. Mm. It's yeah. coming, man. Yeah, yeah it's for sure. It's coming. This the year. For real, for real. That's it. It's the year. Everything's gonna change, man. That business, the business behind it is is mm-hmm. is is falling into place. Everything is gonna come together and yeah. you, you spoke it into existence. It's gonna happen, bro. Yeah. It's gonna happen. It's coming. Um, man, bro, it was an amazing interview. It was great. I feel like we got to know you. I feel like our our, our audience got to know you a little bit. You know what I mean? Because you got a tear over there, man. A little bit, bro. A little <laughs> bit. Because I'm also a, I'm also a content creator. You know what I mean? And, and I also I, I also you know what I'm saying like I make I make a living off of this and mm-hmm. sometimes it's also very hard I don't make a lot of money sometimes I don't make money you know what I mean sometimes like, I make sure everybody else makes money you know what I mean like it's our dream You're yeah dream. we all want to have our family be taken per- care of social media's perception of what people think of them is like it's not real mm-hmm. yeah. like a person can have a smile on their face and be going through like hard times mm-hmm. look at Robin Williams oh, for sure. you know what I'm saying like he had a whole life just making people laugh but mm-hmm. that nigga was hurting like yeah. That's not what I want to do. I don't want to make you laugh. I don't want to make real movies. I'm an actor. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if you heard a person, person telling you all your life you talented, you got it, bro. You got it. And you sitting there like, I do? Nigga, you're more than me. Like, you got more than me. What are you talking about? And people, perception is so lost on social media. It's, it's when you in this life and you know how much it is, what you doing, man, I've gone like, seven months straight making graphics not making no bread like waking dank people thinking that shit blowing up and it's not yeah it's every graphic this late night like this late night hustling this is doing what i gotta do this is me telling my wife like hey, i'm we good we, we we straight we good and she hearing that shit four years over you know what i'm saying like to a person certain person time like they're like i'm done and she's been there you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying like so that goes to that conversation like earlier when I said, I'm ready, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I want my success to be, I want to pass over, rest in peace to my, my wife's dad. But like one day I wanted him to say, hey, I got something to the table. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I brought something. I'm not just taking your daughter from you. Your daughter's going to be straight. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I want that. And until I get that, I don't, what's the point of being married? We're going to get married five Five minutes afterwards, we worried about a bill. Right. That's, that's not marriage. You know what I'm saying? Like, supposed to go on a honeymoon, not going more in debt. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want that. I want them to be like, shit, they finna go out there. They finna go to Bahamas. They finna go out. Like, I want that. She deserves it. Yeah. So until then, you got my heart. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going nowhere. You know, but I got to grind. Yeah. Yeah. You got to grind. You got to get it, man. Yeah. You gotta get it. You're gonna get it, man. It's happening. It's happening right now. In the short period of time that I've come in contact with you, I've seen it. Like, yeah, it's, uh, sure. it's it's definitely on its way. It's nothing but elevation. It continues to be elevation. You know that's why we believe in you. We see it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's coming, bro. You doing what you're supposed to be doing. I know you doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? So keep it up, bro. Keep it up. We're here. And if you love hey, your next shit, next year, keep going. next year it's gonna be lit. Yeah, it's gonna be super fucking lit. Super yeah. fucking lit. It's only up from here. Yeah. And if you're not tapped in with motherfucking notes, you sleep, man. You need to go on and do it, man. You gotta tell everybody where they can follow you, bro. If they not following you, because they need to do it. All right. Big shouts out. To All of them. I know you got a lot of them yeah. too. Big shouts out right? to Private Hip Hop Podcast. Go check them out. PrivateHipHop.com. Um, Wake and Dank. On Instagram, Wicked Dank, all social media platforms. Think so good, all co- across social media platforms. Note Smith, all media platforms. Um, I have a link tree, but you know it's a lot of platforms. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all those platforms. Just go check them out. Um, Aroma Collective on YouTube. Hey man, thank you, Diversity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Follow your dream, man. Follow your Do dream. it. Follow your motherfucking dream every motherfucking day. Don't ever stop. And you know. 
Make sure you subscribe while you're doing that. While you're out there following your dreams, subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to Hip Channel. You know what I'm saying? Tap the yeah. fuck in. Tap the Believe fuck in. in yourself. Believe in yourself. And Stink So Good. You can find it on our channel every other Friday mm -hmm. live, man. Uh, next is uh, Northside Nino and hey. Polo. And on Polo. TV. Tickets link coming today. We're going to mm -hmm. get That's it up gonna today. Be yes. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, till next time, man. Peace. Peace. Yeah. Smoke time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey.